Hello everybody, Tom Gresser here with Games by the Minute, and today we are in Asuka. Um, this game came out a while back, uh, a month or so ago, maybe two, something like that. I've been playing it for pretty much since it came out. Uh, it's our early access game, so it's still in development. But it's pretty good, uh, and I've, I've dived into it pretty good now, where uh, I think I understand it enough to do a video on it, so here we are. Start off with the uh, screen here. You got new game, load game, back, obviously, whatever. But uh, we're gonna go with new game, and uh, I already got this one queued up, if you will. So uh, this it's a random or yeah, random generated seed thing for the map. So uh, you can put in whatever you want here, or you can use a random generated one like this. Um, I don't really see the difference in either one, so uh, I just use the random one when I start up a new one. Um, you can have your choice between the male or the female character. Uh, male being Ragnar, female being Asuka. Um, you can, there's a little bit of a customization thing with face and hair. It's not too extensive, it's pretty limited, but gives you a little bit of customization, so it's not too bad. This is the uh, one-eyed show as I have also this one and this one and this is the default that they give you. But we're going to go with this one for this particular playthrough and this one is Asuka, Daughter of the Raven and Keeper of the Eye. is the brilliant leader of the exiled people of the north. She's a nimble, tireless and resourceful hunter an extraordinary sense of perception matched only by the swiftness of her intellect. She alone holds the secret to the eye of Odin and the hope of her people's future. Um, she excels in perception, intelligence, dexterity, and stamina, mostly. Which makes her a pretty good archer. But she's got okay strength and okay vitality. So therefore, she holds her own in melee as well. Um, Ragnar, he's obviously more about the strength and uh, vitality, all that good stuff. He is way better with melee than ranged. Uh, not so great on intelligence or perception. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Ragnar is a former thrall who earned his freedom through hard work. His great physical strength together with an unbreakable will fueled by his faith in a primal bear god make him an invaluable ally and friend of Asuka. Where Asuka leads through sharpness and wit, Ragnar is there to break wood, stone, and foe with raw ferocity. So. Obviously, the game's called Asuka. The main character seems to be a bit more uh, correct, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it, she's obviously better at um, a lot of the things involving this uh, storyline, like uh, it says the secrets of the Eye of Odin and all that good stuff. So, I generally go with Asuka. Um, seems to work out pretty well. Uh, the melee in this game isn't the best yet, so uh, I rely heavily on range. Um, but that being said, well, let's get started. Uh, normally, when you first start, you get a little um, scene that you know kind of frames in what's going on. But uh, the gist of it is. Uh, your people got a little too uh, sure of themselves and started tearing down statues of their gods and the gods got ha unhappy with that and uh, sent them to exile uh, and now they have to start their civilization over. Uh, yeah, so that's where we start off here. Alright, let's start you off on a shipwreck. These five blue stones and that big guy. And if you watch the open cutscene, you'll know who that guy is. If you don't, 
And you'll be a little confused with this stuff, like I was when I skipped it at first. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead and pick these up. And now when you first start, there's going to be a little tutorial flame. It's a little blue flame that pops up. And uh, if you're playing solo and uh, you want to learn the game, it's a great thing to keep on. But it gets, it's not exactly very intuitive, so uh, it kind of needs a little work. But uh, it's good for learning the game. Uh, you want to hit the Z key to uh, do the resource finder like I just did there. But I recommend you uh, remap it to the middle mouse button because yeah, you're going to hit a lot. Uh, I basically always am hitting it just so much, in fact, that in other games now, I've instinctively started hitting the uh, middle mouse button when I'm looking for stuff. <laughs> so. But yeah, when you start off, you want to collect some rocks and some reeds. Um, you shouldn't really run into anything enemy-wise except for a wisp or so. Every now and then there'll be a, uh, a white ship. Uh, it's a shipwreck that has basically zombies that they call the whites. Uh, well, there's some of the wisps right there, and if you hit the uh, Viking radar, as I like to call it, uh, they show up red. Um, combat's pretty straightforward in this. Left is uh, normal attack, and right is power. And everybody's got a uh, consciousness meter, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. The, the below bar, yeah, when it goes down, they get dizzy and they get the stars above their head and whatnot. Um, so they get stunned for a bit. As you can see, melee is not uh, her strong point right now. She's doing one point of damage whether she's hitting hard or soft. So, when you run out of damage, you do. do slower in your attack and stuff like that. Uh, but these guys do drop sticks and uh, fiber, which you need. Um, one thing you want to do right away is turn your reeds into fiber. And uh, yeah, you just want to keep going around, hitting the radar and collecting stuff and things. These muscles are good food source at first. I usually get two or three rocks worth. There's about a stack of about 10 or so. Um, I think you get three every time. Alright, once you get a uh, bit of stone and fibers going, go ahead and fix these a little bit of that. Uh, you want to go into your build menu by hitting B. Craft you some rope, and you want to craft a stone blade as well. Um, and then you're going to need to find some sticks and whatnot. I believe the one stick we got is enough to uh, build the first thing you need, which is a stone hammer. Yeah, there we go. And I think we can also build a knife. Everything else requires more sticks, I believe, to make. Yes, uh, so we can proceed pretty well with these. Now that we have a, an axe and a knife, we'll do more than one point of damage every time we hit one of those wisps, so that's a good thing. Um, but from here, you uh, basically have to make a choice whether or not you want to go inland or stay on the beach. Um, I personally go inland at this point because um, you can fish in this game, and it doesn't matter where you throw it out there, you just fish. There are fish that are jumping uh, out there that you can see. Eventually you get boats and you can go out there, but uh, um, I find it works out better if you go inland. Uh, not too far, because you mean still have access to the water, obviously. Um, keep an eye out for these birds nests too, because they the feathers, and Asuka likes to you know, shoot arrows. And um, these bushes here are good for sticks. Each one will give you two, guaranteed two every time. I call them tool bushes, because a lot of your tools require one or two sticks uh, and just a couple of stones to work. 
or to be made in. Uh, when you go inland, you want to take a, a look at one of these here. This is going to be your water source in the game. Um, in its current state, it is one drink water source, and you just you can either hold E to drink it, and then the first one it gives you that, uh, or you can hold down R and uh, it will ref uh, fill your water skin or whatever you want to call it there. Um, but yeah, you just go inland and you look for an area that you would like to start your village in. Um, all while, you know, harvesting certain things. Bird's nests and flax butches are very important, in my opinion. Because they give you straight up fibers and they give you five or six of them. So I like to grab anyone that I see for the most part. But, uh, the sticks... Four or five of these bushes should be all you need to uh, get started with uh, the beginning tools and whatnot. And if you're following the tutorial by now, um, you have to use fibers, I believe, um, to uh, make the first fire. Um, but I usually skip over that. Now, a couple of things that you're looking for uh, when you're planning out where your village is, is you want a lot of space, but keep in mind that the wooded areas that you come across, um, they can be considered space even though there's trees on them, because you do clear quite a bit of forest uh, when you build your village first. Um, but yeah, you want to have a, a good amount of uh, somewhat flat land. There is a lot of, uh, oh, is that a cave? I think I found a cave right away. Oh, I did. Nice. Um, there's a lot of mostly flat land, but with the hoe, the uh, ter terraformation tool, you can uh, you can pretty much make anything you want as far as flat land, stuff like that. You can completely flatten the world if you want to, uh, but not necessary. You can build with the land, too. All right, well, this is something that is nice to have when you first start out. Having a cave or knowing the whereabouts of a cave right away is very handy. Not necessary, but it's you know, kind of a bonus. Um, being the fact that it is basically straight off where we started, um, that's pretty good. In my so let's go back towards where we started just to see what the land looks like between here and that cave. And uh, I remember also while you're running around, you do want to be picking up flax and uh, berries stuff like that because you're going to need to sustain yourself with food and water while you uh, look for this village uh, location. Um, it's looking like this isn't going to be very viable for a village right here. Lots of stuff in the way, lots of hills and stuff, but um, does have a fair bit of resources definitely put to good use. Um, it's kind of far inland, uh, didn't think that would be a thing, but I guess there's water right there, so. Um, these guys aren't too hard to deal with, and they do group, group up, so you gotta be careful of that. But they hit hard, so you don't want to get hit by them if you can avoid it. Uh, but yeah, you can pick them off fairly easy. And then uh, shift and direction is your uh, dodge roll. Whatever we call it. So, so left shift and then the direction that you're going in. Um, I find just holding the direction you're going and double tapping that shift key is pretty uh, effective. But if you get them into a good situation like that, you can take two of them out at a time. Um, you can take more than two out if they're in the area, so your your attacks are area of effect. Good to note. Alright, um, looks like we got a lot of water and stuff. Uh, for the most part in this area. Um, it looks like we're going to be uh, going more to the right here. So let's uh, go see what's through this way. Um, the, the first process of finding um, your village location is somewhat time consuming. 
if you get lucky and uh, you find a good pasture or whatever right away and I mean it's great uh, usually it takes me uh, through the first initial day night cycle here where it says day you survive zero it's usually the next following day when I find a decent spot um, the way you can speed that process up is once you find a map seed that you like you can copy and paste that map seed onto the next one that you play and uh, then you'll know where everything is because if you have the right map if you have the same map seed it will be the same map all right and we have encountered some wolves now these are wolf gar or whatever they're called I forget the name of them they have a viking uh type name it's like wolf nar i think or something like that. oh come on now, you really don't want to fight these guys if you can help it right away because they are quite vicious in the beginning but once you get going and you get decent weapons and you've leveled attack skills, they're not terrible to deal with. Alright, uh, well this is a valley area. It would be much better flat. <laughs> Alright, so we've made it this far. Let's come up this way on the top part of the cave, see if there's anything. Alright, right here is actually not a bad spot. Um, it's got a couple of uh, hurdles to jump through here. Uh, mainly being that this uh, birch forest you can't cut down until you get metal done. Uh, once you get metal and you got metal tools, then those are no longer a problem. Alright, and at that sound, it is the beginning of the first uh, day, or technically second. Um, and I have discovered a good portion of the map, and uh, it's looking like this valley next to the cave is going to be about our best bet. Uh, it's not the greatest starting point in the world. Um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of uh, hunting in the area. Um, usually you find some areas that uh, have a lot of the deer uh, in the game. Uh, but there hasn't been a whole lot of that around. Um, I did run into the one wolf den. Uh, so, that being said, we are going to start here. Uh, whether or not we will end up uh, in this location for good or not is yet to be uh, But we have our best option here starting because if nothing else we can just keep this as a mining town for when we are ready to uh, open up that cave and get metal. If nothing else we'll use it for that. So uh, one of the things you want to do when you're first starting out is find out where your water sources are. We got one right here, uh, one down here, uh, doesn't look like a whole lot. This land here that we're on is fairly flat, so uh, I think we're going to have to do a lot of clearing in this area. But this has three wells really close to each other, and uh, that's a pretty good starting area in my opinion. Um, now, some of these bigger trees, you're going to need to work around until you can get to um, bigger axes that you need for cutting them down. It is definitely doable. We have a little flat area-ish out here that we can work with and start from. So, let's get started, shall we? We've got one water source right there that's on pretty much the same plane as the rest of them there. And what we have... Uh, basically a triangle of water and we'll go right there in front of me there's one and so we're going to try and conserve conserve that as the uh, water sources that we're going to use I think would be the best uh, it's either that or these three this one here this one not sure yet but to get started you got to make your first fire which is a simple fire um, I suggest doing it in a somewhat open area and it looks like we're going to have to do a little bit of terrain work. One of the things you want to do is if your water source is lower, you really want to start at that location, um, that, that height, because otherwise you could uh, destroy your water source. And that's uh, not good. But in order to do that, you're going to start off by making a hoe. Um, you don't necessarily need the hoe right away. You can just put down the plans, but you will need the hoe for leveling and stuff like that. So, I suggest you make one as soon as possible. So, what this one is saying is we need another blade to make that, but we will also make the hammer. And then when we're running around, we just gotta remember to grab a couple of rocks there. But, go into the build menu and select your terrain leveling or tool or field or whatever they call it. You're gonna get a grid that shows up. If it's green, you can do it. If it's red, you can't. Um, this is a 
pretty cool tool to use uh, for terrain stuff. You get 25 of these blocks. Uh, you can go five by five, or you can go you know, two by, well, I think it's, it would be 12, so you get 24. Uh, however you choose to do it. Um, I find doing the three wide and as far as out as you can go works pretty well um, for leveling for different buildings that you're going to be building. Now you don't, like I said, you don't have to do this step first. This is just what I personally do as it makes things run a little smoother when you can slap it down on flat land. Um, that's, that's part of the reason why you don't want to do a huge area when you're leveling out land because then you're kind of stuck to that, uh, that level. So you want to be able to have some different elevations in your village just for I mean, aesthetics really. Alright, once you got your first area here cleared off. You're going to want to build your campfire. Um, and if you did the tutorial thing, it'll you probably have already built this at the beach. Um, but we can just get this done real quick. Do the upgrade. Alright, now, very important at this point. You want to make sure you put a cover on your fire. Because if you don't, when it rains, it goes out. And that's... Uh, just never good. Uh, so we want to make sure we do that as soon as possible. Then it's going to start asking you for bark and sticks. So you got to go ahead and start chopping down some trees. Alright, so for every small tree that you chop down, you're going to get, uh, I believe it's five sticks. Five small sticks, two long sticks, four bark and a couple of resin. Um, the larger the tree, the larger the uh, resources. So this tree here was about the same size as these, so that's about what you're gonna get out of those. But this one here is a little bit bigger, has a little bit more hit points. So you get more out of this one than you do out of the smaller tree. But it's uh, give and take, you, know, you get more resources out of it. So it goes ahead and falls. And chop up the trunk as well. And this one gives you the bark, uh, same uh, for bark. Uh, but this one gives you six small sticks and three long sticks and three resin uh, with the bark as well. Um, also, uh, these stumps are where you get firewood. So you're going to want to get the stumps as soon as you get a pickaxe. As but after you've cut a couple of those trees down, you should have uh, plenty of what you need for the next few steps. Uh, you're going to want to pick up the bark and the sticks. And if you hold down the T key, um, it uh, picks up everything of the same thing, of the same item in that area. So it's only a small area around your character, but uh, it's still better than picking them up one at a time. Okay, once that's done, you need to have a hammer, and then you can build that. And there we go. Now, when it rains or snows or is windy, your fire won't go out. Um, right here is all you need to do for this part, but you will eventually have to add the barbecue upgrade to it as well. But from here, what I like to do is get the... Um, shelter and the rain collector going at the same time. So as far as the shelter goes, we're going to slap that down. And right here, that's good. We're going to need to use the hoe to level it out. Uh, you don't have to hit the E key to do this. Um, you can just do it manually by clicking, just fine. Uh, and then what you're going to do is hit the Q to Q the uh, recipe and what you're doing there up in the top left you'll see what you need to complete that task uh, we're going to pick up this stick in there this one okay now this is the first multi-stage building that you're going to have this is stage one of this building okay now once you get the stage two um, this is where i like to put down the rain collector 
And I usually put that down uh, opposite the fire that I put the shelter. Um, that's just what I do. There's no, no rhyme or reason to it. It just seems to work for me, so I keep doing it. But this one is also going to take the long sticks and the short sticks, uh, which if you cut down two trees by now, you should have the sticks. But this one is not a multi-stage build. This one is a single stage. And you can pick up small items when you have a larger item in your uh, hands. But if you take a drink or something like that, you will drop the item that is in your hands. And This will pop up the ring collector. We can finish the shot. Now, once you've popped up the rain collector, you'll get the ability to make the well. So I would go ahead and get that started. Don't worry about finishing it right now. Um, just put it down, and uh, that way you don't accidentally kill your water supply there. Uh, but for this next part, uh, if you have rope and whatnot, it'll be green uh, and tell you that you have that uh, and that that's all it needs. Uh, so now we need one long stick and six shorts. We will have to cut down the tree. This should give us plenty what we need. Also, if you notice, my water meter is now flashing right at me. It's telling me that I need to take a drink, which is also making me notice that I need to eat all. While you're doing this, you can drink and it will not interrupt. Um, also, you can eat and it will not interrupt. I'm going to go ahead and eat all of these and drink. Alright, and we are back up to good water and food levels. We have knocked down the tree, so let's go ahead and the rest of this put together. Some sticks. Alright, we got everything we need for the shelter stage 2. Go ahead and build that. Okay, and then we need bark, which if you've been chopping down trees and stuff, you should have most of the bark, if not all, that bark you need for that. And I think we might have had some over here. Either way, we were just too short, so we go ahead and chop down this small tree and uh, take care of that. Now let's build our final stage of the shelter, which will complete the shelter and be able to be Once you build the shelter, you have the ability to build the Odin's Eye, or Eye of Odin, however you want to say that. And uh, I usually build that relatively close to the fire and the shelter that you just built. Um, it doesn't really have to be anywhere in particular. Um, and then you start that and hit the Q button to Q what you need to do. Um, the shelter, you can sleep in it. Um, but your character doesn't really need to sleep. Uh, if you sleep, you do get an energy bonus, and while you're sleeping, you do heal. So if you wanted to heal at this point and go ahead and lay down and sleep, uh, that's great. Uh, like I said, if you look at the bottom bar there, it's giving you buffs, and if you want to know what those buffs are, you go into your inventory, and it will say sheltered, uh, healing, resting, and this is just for being full and hydrated. And now we have an energized, because we were sleeping, your stamina is replenished quickly. So stamina comes back quicker now that we have done that. And it lasts a fairly good amount of time. I mean, it's like, I'd say at least two or three minutes worth. So, but now we have more trees and stuff that we need to cut down. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, now the nights can get kind of dark in this game, especially if there's like bad weather or something like that. Um, this is indicating that it's pretty cloudy, so it's a little darker than, you know, if it was a clear sky. So, uh, right now it's saying that we need five stone, and if we want, we can go around and look at the ground and find the individual stones on the ground. Um, those are resin, uh, don't, but, uh, or you can find a bigger boulder and use a pickaxe to, uh, get that stone. Uh, but we don't have a pickaxe yet, so we have to go ahead and see if we have the stone to do that. And we need uh, one more stone to make another blade to make the pickaxe. There we have it. Now we can make a blade. And I believe we have enough to make... Yeah, we have 
plenty to make that. And then the pickaxe will require one stick, two blades, and one rope. Done. Now we can break stone with the best of them. Uh, they look like, uh, well, big rock. Oh, there's one right there. Um, you'll find them that look like this, or a bigger one. Oh, there's a bunch right there. Anyway, um, same way you do with the tree, you just hold down R. You don't have to select the tool, it will automatically select it when you hold down R. So that's handy. Um, but this will give you, I believe it is six stones and 10 or 20 rocks. I, don't remember. I think it's 10 rocks of the small ones. Um, it does take some time to get through, and you'll probably have to take a break, a uh, stamina break, uh, before you are done with it. Alright, so right here we have the stones and stuff. But you're not quite done with the stone clump. So we're going to hit that. And voila. Now we are with five large stones and I believe ten small stones. Something to that effect. Yes, uh, looks like we have ten or eleven there. Then we have five of these big stones. You're going to want to grab one of those and bring it over. Because you'll need that for the second stage of the uh, Eye of Odin. Go back and get one more of the large stones. Alright, now we can go ahead and finish this. First stage of the Eye of Odin. Alright, now the next stage requires two large rocks, which is why we brought these over. Now you could uh, streamline this a little bit uh, by finding one of those Jotun blood shards to uh, harvest because you get enough stone to do this as well um, but you do get slightly more stone out of the regular stones that can be harvested all right so we now have the eye of odin so we can now summon villagers to help us you need five jotun blood for each villager when you activate it you get your choice between two um, this one being forager instinct and thirsty giant so that means that she drinks a lot, uh, and she's very good at foraging. And there are also three mystery perks that you don't know of until they come out of the stone. Uh, this one is also a thirsty giant, uh, and has a mighty vigor. Uh, possesses exceptional stamina and strength, allowing me to perform physical demanding tasks for extended periods of time without fatigue. Also three randos. So, um... Foraging in the beginning is important because then you'll have some food. Um, I would suggest between uh, these two, I would probably go with Calera. Just because she's got the forager instinct right away. Um, and once you do that, you see on the right hand side, uh, you have about 10 minutes before they are going to uh, come into the world here. Um, I suggest at this time what you do is you go and cut down about five or six of the small trees in your area. So like uh, all these small trees right here, we're going to cut these down. And then find yourself a Jotun blood shard or two, uh, possibly three, because you're going to need that to get the uh, second villager in. Onions will give you an instant health uh, boost. Uh, you'll get instant health uh, hit points back. And garlic is health over time. I think uh, onions also uh, settle your stomach if you ate any uh, rotten food or something by mistake. Uh, and uh, garlic will cure illnesses uh, quicker as well. Alright, well, uh, I have broken my axe, but I managed to cut down... Uh, six of the trees and if you hit your Viking radar you can see all the sticks and stuff are laying all over the ground and uh, they do despawn after a while but it is a long while so don't worry about it um, but the reason why you want to do that is because your, your villager pops up they're gonna be a builder okay right away that's their default um, job is they just help you build things so uh, what you want to do here is 
we're going to keep flattening the terrain and stuff, that's perfectly fine. Um, I like to kind of try and work with the terrain a little bit. Um, I do have ones where I've flattened out the entire area, and that works well, uh, especially for building a base and stuff like that. But uh, you can also, as you can see here, make a hard edge into a nice long sweep, uh, sweeping ramp and or hill, whatever you want to call it. Um, it doesn't have to be as hard of an edge like this as it is. And uh, the whole tool is a very um, steep learning curve, I guess. Uh, uh, you gotta kind of get the feel for it. But uh, the important thing to remember with it is that where your cursor, where the little dot on your screen is, it is right where that's going to hit. So you want to make sure that that is where you want to affect the ground. Also, the level at which you are at affects what it does to the ground. So if you are above or below the hill that you are trying to uh, level out or whatever, you will it will affect differently. So we got that pretty much smoothed out, we don't have to worry about that right now. So the next couple things you want to build are another shelter or two. Um, in this case we're going to level out the ground right here, um, and we're going to go out a couple. So we go out two here, and then we're going to go along about six. Go ahead and place another shelter for that second villager that you're going to spawn in. And you can get it pretty close. Right. And you want to keep it pretty tight for these ones because they do take up some space. Uh, and you're going to need like five or six of them. So but don't worry about putting any resources into that right now. Uh, but what we want to do is queue this uh, first. Then this. Now that way when this person comes out, that's the first thing they're going to do. And then we want to go ahead and build the barbecue. And cue that as well. Any rope that you have, you want to go ahead and put that in. Because they don't make rope themselves. So you have to make all of the rope. Uh, Alright, well let's go and get this Jotu butt chart up here. And any, uh, we're going to probably need at least two of them, possibly three, because you can get, uh, you, you almost always get two out of every rock, but you can get three, and in a rare occasion, you can get four. Alright, then the first villager. The first villager is Clara. You go ahead and hit the tab key. That brings up your village menu. Now, when you do this, it does pause the game. So that's important to note and if you look in the top right you'll see the spring and the time is not moving confirm that it does pause so you can take your time in here and do things you're not as rushed as it seems like you are in the first bits so this is basically a pause menu um, one of the things that you want to do here is select the shelter that you're going to put this person into and assign them now they are a gatherer seven power or whatever you want to call it but then you want to go into the person by clicking on them you can see that they're moderately increasing but their schedule hours or their schedule balance and the work hours they don't like now um i've never seen them like work hours like that's always going to be a name i've never seen that green <laughs> so but schedule balance it won't be green until you assign them a job so while they're building they're always going to have schedule balance issues um, so what we want to do here is we want to go in and see what her strength are. Her strength is gathering, and uh, this is all the vitality and stuff. That, um, one and a half stars into gathering already, so that's good. Then you want to click on the character, and right now it says their home is a shelter, job is builder, this is their vitals. This is uh, when they're resting and stuff like that. Like once this meter gets down, they're gonna get real unhappy. So you wanna keep that going and you wanna keep the food and the water up as well, obviously. 
and this is their health. So if you're going through this menu and you, you know, see that there is a problem, one of these is low or whatever, and you can adjust that. But it's important to note that in this menu, in when you're dealing with just Clara herself in this menu, you notice that the time is now ticking. So it's only in the villager menu or the village menu or pause. So uh, keep that in mind. That by hitting tab and you'll be paused again. But once you click on a different one, uh, then if you don't see this up here, you're not paused, basically. So once that is uh, arranged, um, this is the uh, management screen, I guess, the one you, the tab brings up. You have the settlement screen on the left, you have your villagers in the middle, and then you have your structures on the right. Um, it'll give you little uh, notifications on the, the left there in general, um, saying things like some of your villagers are homeless, but we're taking care of that one, so we don't have to worry about that. Then it says 100% of your structures are defenseless. We will be taking care of that once we have defenses in place. And there's no food production, so we're going to want to get that up as soon as possible. Okay, so we've been through all that. Now up here you have um, all the basic things that you, uh, what you're going to be doing in the game. You can go through and read all those if you'd like. Um, there are errors in it though that I have found, so do take it with a grain of salt. Then you also have your journals, which are anything that you've discovered will be on here that you can look at. Um, you just click on one and it tells you how much it costs to make that building and what it does um, and also any creatures that you have been in contact with will give you a little backstory on that as well. Uh, the next tab is the God tab. Um, each one of these is basically a little bit of a, uh, like a challenge if you will. Uh, click on this and anything that you've done will be green. So uh, if you want to pin these up so you can uh, complete them all, that would be great. Um, as far as I know, there's, I don't think there's any uh, benefit to it, but I mean, other than, you know, knowing how to deal with the things that you're fighting and why not. But like, uh, there's the survival one, all that good stuff. Uh, and you can go through all these on your own, look at the different challenges that you can do in them. Uh, they're not hard to complete, it's just basically uh, keeping track of what you've done. Uh, and then we have this menu, which is the default one. When you hit tab, this is what pops up. And then you have your settlement uh, resources. Any of these items, when you have them, will be an icon and a name of what they are and how many you have. Right now, we have nothing, so <laughs> we have no storage, so we cannot have any of this stuff. But when you do have stuff in storage, this will tell you everything in your village that you have in a storage box or some type of storage. All right, now that that's out of the way. And if you notice on the left-hand side, now there's a build progress bar on those buildings. That means that our villager has started to build those, uh, but it is now, uh, villagers bedtime so they chose to go to sleep um, if you want you can take advantage of the beginning start time happiness and make them work through the first night um, but I don't do that generally because I find uh, having that first bit of happiness there in the beginning uh, definitely comes in handy uh, but we are out of pickaxe here so we got to make another one real quick uh, it just takes basic resources, so everything you need should be laying around at your feet. And or close by that you can harvest. So, it's usually not that big a deal. It just takes a couple seconds to make another one. Oh, no, they are building stuff. Okay, they haven't went to bed yet. Uh, getting the well done first. Good, good. Alright, now we have four of the Jotun shards, but we need five, so we're going to have to find another Jotun blood shard, boulder, whatever you want to call it, uh, and then, oh, there's one, and then we'll get the second villager going. 
All right, now that we have the fifth blood shard, we can go ahead and put that into here. Activate. And we have a choice between Jacquim and Vigo. Um, this guy is good at growing plants and stuff. He likes to be awake and vigilant in the morning. So he likes morning, so he'd be a good day shifter. And then we have a winter resilience and steadfast resolve. So they don't mind the cold and they're, uh, they're pretty tough, basically is what that means. And then the three random perks as well. So like with Clara, we knew about the thirsty giant and we knew about the forager, but we did not know about the fact that she's a winter huntsman and she's tireless and uh, that is a thirsty athlete, I believe. So she drinks a lot. So um, if you do get one that has, a, you know, that, that drinks a lot or eats a lot, um, the eating a lot thing, they're just going to have to deal with that on their own. You're going to have to make a little bit more food, something like that. But uh, the drinks a lot, um, you can make them another drinking pouch and give it to them. So that way they don't have to keep running back and filling it up. But let's get going here before we waste too much time. We're going to go with Jokam. Joking, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and finish these up here. Okay, and the next thing you want to place down for building is your gathering hut, because that will allow you to gather food. Um, you can uh, yeah, make an area for it or build it in the existing area that you have, which is what I'm going to do. Go into basic production, select gathering pit. Hit build and then fit it right in. I like to make this um, relatively close to the first fire, like so. Um, that way they don't have far to go when they are cooking the food and all of that good stuff. So, um, it's also important to note that on day three you will get your first Blood Moon um, raid and it will be in the evening. It will be three of those zombie whites, or whatever you want to call them, uh, that we fought earlier. They're relatively easy to deal with, but they will be focused on the center of your town. I believe they are focused on the Eye of Odin, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. They do seem like they do uh, gravitate towards your village and not your characters, so... But once you get within range, then they're all over you. But, uh, so if you're out and about exploring, you want to get back before day three. Uh, because, yeah, they're killing you. Or before night three, I guess is the better way to say that. Alright, now, uh, at this point, your village is going to be pretty self sufficient. Um, because the builders are going to build. Um, once that shelter becomes available and that other person pops out, you can control that from anywhere on the map, so you don't have to be here to um, get them into the houses and whatnot. So right now, what I'm going to do is run around and explore the map a bit, gathering resources and stuff like that along the way. Right. And one thing I forgot to mention is uh, you also want to build yourself a weapon. <laughs> uh, you're going to need to build the short bow uh, and or club as soon as possible. Uh, I neglected to do that in the beginning, but that's okay. I didn't need it really. I had the uh, axe, so go ahead and make a flimsy short bow at first. And then we're going to make uh, probably about three stacks of these arrows. Should be enough for now. Uh, each one gives you ten, yeah, ten arrows per. Um, and if you want to go sword and board, you can. You can do the shield and the club. Um, this particular character excels at the, the archery in the game. So we're, um, Also, the arrows will appear in your bottom bar here. Just uh, right-click them to A. All right, now we can continue on. <laughs> Alright, and our second villager has arrived. So, go into the tab menu, 
Okay, it doesn't look like they've completed the shelter yet because they don't have any ropes. So he's going to have to stay home. And I forgot to uh, queue the building for the uh, gathering shelter, so I'm not sure how far along that is at the moment. Uh, but the builder has been up for a little while, so I'm guessing they have started on that. But we are about done with this, and then now uh, there's two builders, so we'll get that done even faster. Finish up this Jotu shower here. Oh, hey, we got lucky, we got three on that one. I think that gives us enough. Yeah, so we have enough for our next one. Let's go ahead and get that done. And just as I get back, they are finishing up the gathering hut. And I will go over and put the rope here so they can finish this one up. And they will do so. The exclamation point over their head is to tell me that they can't find rope. And the other guy is going to say that he doesn't have a place to live. He's currently building that place to live. Uh, now they'll go get the bark that is laying out. And we'll fill with the bark and build that. But what we want to do right now is go into this menu. And go into the gather pit. And now also when you get to this menu, your time is running as well. Just keep that in mind. Um, and now what we want to do is assign the gatherer that we got first to the gathering pit and that will give you a challenge that has been done Haldemarlar anyway, they favor you that's one of those challenges that we showed earlier with the gods so now she's going to focus on gathering food and putting in a gathering hut bin I believe they just got the second shelter done yep, okay go back in and now you can see there's two shelters go ahead and assign the builder there now at this point you're going to want to start thinking about um, schedules and stuff like that. If you hover over top of the uh, number here, it'll give you a quick glance at if they're happy or not. And both of these guys are pretty happy with what they're doing. Uh, they're significantly increasing. Now part of that is because they're new and they have the optimistic outlook at first. But they only have one negative and that's work hour. Okay. So what you can do at this point is you can go into their personal menus and go to the schedule. This is the default schedule that you get. Um, most of them are okay working that, but like Thirsty Giants and stuff like that, they're going to want breaks more often so they can you know, take you know, drinking and eating and doing the, the relaxation stuff that they do. Um, the day starts at 8, they wake up at 7, they do a, uh, they have their getting ready, eating and drinking rituals, and then they go right to work and they work. Now, what I found works pretty well, at least for the day shift anyway, is that if you break that up and you put a break right at noon, um, you leave that four hour chunk there, and then you count four hours back from here, and you put a break there. I find that that keeps them pretty happy throughout the day, no matter what they are, unless they are, you know, favoring the night. Um, now what that is, the smokers, those are the little rabbit creatures. Also, make sure you hit apply, and then you want to create and say this is the day schedule, or shift as I like to call it, and save, and there we go. Now anybody that starts out, we can put them on day shift. But also keep in mind you are going to need a night shift as well. Alright, let's go back in here and you can see off in the distance there. Got those little guys coming in. Um, they look like little rabbits with uh, bull horns on them or something. It's, uh, I think it's supposed to be a joke. They're supposed to be horny rabbits. Uh, I don't know. Seems like uh, the joke to me. Uh, but now we have a well so we have plenty of drinking water and so we don't have to worry about going thirsty anymore, at least over in the village. Alright, and we have a gatherer, and the gatherer will be gathering and putting stuff in, which they already have been. They've given us some eggs and berries right away. They also store seeds and feathers and fiber and other vegetables in here. So what you want to do at this point is go into the Q Tasks menu. Um, you can either do that by walking up to the building and hitting Q, or going into the Q, uh, the village menu, and selecting your gathering pit. Once you do that, you can hit the Q tasks, 
and this will set your priorities on what they're grabbing. Um, you want to set a high priority on mushrooms, a high priority on onions and feathers. Um, seeds, I usually keep those at low priority. Um, also, you want a high priority on garlic and uh, the rest of it I leave at meat. Um, the main reason why you want the garlic, the mushrooms and stuff like that is because those are the ones that are going to the most uh, readily available and you don't want to fill it with a bunch of stuff you're not going to use. Okay, now the smokers are leaving. It's okay, and most of the time when that comes up you don't need to worry about it, but um, if you have a lot of stuff already and there's no fences or anything, they will tear stuff out of your inventory and damage your buildings slightly, but not much to really worry about. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, they are annoying, but that's about it. So once you've done that, they know what to do and what you want them to do. All that good stuff. Come back over here. Let's get this one going. We have a choice between however the hell you say that and however the hell you say that. Okay, now couple of important things to note on these ones is this guy here is nocturnal resilience i thrive in the serene night endure the cold with greater fortitude than others okay so he likes the cold nights of winter basically is what that's saying so you want him to be awake at night so this can be one of your first night shifters if you would so choose to have a night shifter um and then there's this one which is retired bowman uh proficient archer uh, and regain stamina at a slower rate. So, they're good with the bow, but they're hard to recover from any physical uh, recovery, you know, like, because it takes stamina to shoot the bow. So, once they shoot their load, <laughs> they have to take a minute to recover. So keep that in mind as well. Um, they're good to have uh, in the beginning because you're gonna need defense to make your people happy. And one of the ways you do that is having somebody guard while they're sleeping and working. So I'm going to go with her. All right. Now at this point, um, the next things you want to do is put down your woodcutter hut. Seems like a good spot. So go ahead and start the leveling process on that. Okay, you make sure you hit the Q button. Put in any rope that you need. And then he'll start building that right away. Um, the other thing you want to put up is your stone pit. Uh, should be an okay spot here, I believe. Oh, and if you've already selected it to build once, you can hit the L key. And uh, it will build whatever you built the last time. So. Now this is going to look a little crowded right here. But we will be cutting down all of these trees around it, so it's not going to be too bad all the time. Completely uh, build all of that building. All right, first blood moon has arrived. See the red icon on the top compass there? That's where they're coming from. And if you hit the uh, map button, you can see right where they spawn in it. So uh, we're going to want to keep an eye out with the Viking radar. Once you see some red popping up on the radar, I'm going to go in and deal with that. Oh, and there they are right there. And there will be three of them for your first uh, Blood Moon Night. And as soon as you get close, they will uh, yeah, be aggroed on you. Oop, and they do hurt when they hit, so keep that in mind. Keep an eye on your stamina. Alright, well, we took a little damage there, but we've killed all three of them, and now you are safe. As soon as that sound goes off, uh, we no longer need to worry about them. They are done. Next thing you want to do is get your third shelter up. Okay, now these three villagers will be enough to uh, employ these uh, buildings. But, you're going to need another builder, so you're going to have to build one more shelter. And 
I like to stack them pretty close to each other. You don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. This is just the way I'm doing it. And there you go. Now while we have these four items ready to go. The builder will automatically start building those when he wakes up. <laughs> Vitality, so she recovers from fatigue, but she is chill sensitive, so if she don't like the cold, make sure you get her some warm clothes, she'll be fine. But she is lumberjack strength, we got lucky there. Uh, that was one of the random ones, so she's gonna be our first woodcutter as soon as we get the, uh, that built. So, let's go back to the regular menu here. Looks like they're still working on that. So she's just gonna be a homeless builder. Uh, until she gets the woodcutter pit done. Then she's going to be an employed homeless woodcutter. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's get these in here. And our next one will be either uh, Green Thumb Nocturnal, which is kind of interesting, uh, or an Iron Stomach uh, Daylight Devotion. Uh, but if you read it, it says Thoughts to be, or Thought to be Cursed spirits of those who were washed ashore yet lacked the con conviction of the old faith being denied passage to the halls of the gods. Their family or er, their frailty betrays the weakness of their spirit and their bodies made of driftwood shows the rot of their willpower. So, all of that sounds very interesting. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if that means they like the light or not. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, it's got a daylight symbol and stuff like that, so I'm assuming they like the daylight. That's what I'm going with there. So, yeah. Um, and then we have Nocturnal and Green Thumb. Obviously, they thrive at night. We've uh, not got any night shifters yet, but we're going to go with Siv. She don't eat that much, and uh, that's good in the beginning, so, <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, let's get the rope into this one here. Nope, not that one. This one back here. Okay. And then they'll finish up those buildings. Alright, they've gotten to the point where they've run out of basic materials, so we have to cut down a few more trees for them to continue. Alright, now we have the third stage on one of the huts. Almost all the bark on us for that. Just pick that one up and that'll be taking care of that. Oh, uh, never mind, they already did that. So, <laughs> we'll just wait for them to get the five sticks over into this one. Alright, once they get this built, we'll be able to put the bark in and then they'll build the other shelter. There we go. Alright, now that we have all the shelters built, let's go back into the tab menu this person a uh, shelter. Shelter number four. And a sign. And then uh, when the other one comes up, we will already have a shelter for them. So that's good. Awesome and great. Alright, now what we want to do is go back into this menu, select a woodcutter pit. And we want to go to the wood cutter, master tree and gathering and gathering and preparing wood for various uses. So that's where we're gonna put her. Now this guy likes he's a farmer and a skinner. Uh, so he'll either be good at hunting or farming, either or when that comes around. Um, I don't think he says anything about cutting wood. Okay, so he says he's a feeble logger, so he's not good at cutting wood. He eats a little bit more than normal, and uh, he likes the daylight, so 
Um, also remember to apply your date. Okay, now everybody's on the same shift. Everything will be getting done approximately at the same time. And once this next person pops out, then we'll have a stone cutter and a builder and a gatherer of food and a woodcutter. And uh, that's the basics of what you need to uh, start off your village in this game. Now if you want your uh, the picture in the right there of your latest villager to go away, you just hit escape. And that'll make that disappear. Uh, but as usual, in the meantime, you want to be going around looking for Jotun blood and stuff like that. I'm going to cut down a couple more trees just to get some more resources for them. I don't have anything that needs to be built at the moment. But once you get all of those pits and stuff built, the next thing you're going to need to build will be your workshop pit. This will allow you to advance to the tools that cut the bigger uh, stuff down. Um, I usually put that pretty close. This looks like it will fit there just fine. It is a rather large structure, so keep that in mind. Oh, and we don't have a hoe, but that's okay. We do have a builder. The builder will do that now. Also, we have a gatherer, and the gatherer's not going to be using her hoe. So we can go up and hit trade and grab her hoe, and then we'll have another hoe. We don't have to build it. So, also keep that in mind. So, anything that's not, anybody that's not going to use it, you can take it from them. Uh, and give it to some of you will use it or yourself, however you want to do that. Our fourth villager has popped out. Let's go get it and put her into... Oh, she's a wood chopper as well. And she's actually a maker as well. So, what we're going to do here... Oh, I went into the wrong menu. There we go. Uh, shelter first. Give her shelter. Now, we already have a wood cutter. We need a stone cutter. So, I think what we're going to do is assign... Uh, Jacum here to the stone cutter. We're going to keep her as a builder for now and then when we pop out the next villager for our builder she will be assigned to the new workstation that has just been put in the workstation pit. But as I said let's get uh, the stone cutter going here. Go ahead and make him into a stone cutter and we'll go in and he's going to need a um, what you call it a pickaxe to start off with I just usually give them the whatever I have for a pickaxe to start off with last them a pretty decent amount of time but with that uh, the next thing you have to do is make sure you go ahead and get some more Jotun that's gonna be the theme for most of this but this is the beginnings of what you need to do uh, once you get to this point uh, you can pretty much start exploring the map and stuff like that just have to make sure th certain things uh, needs are met and uh, you can do most of it from the menu uh, the villager menu whatever but uh, I think that's where I'm going to end this video here I'll get more in depth with the workshop pit there uh, in the next video hope this was helpful and hope you enjoyed have a good one bye